Today we're going to be rebuilding the Cleveland Browns for the first time in a while. And the Browns are one of the most interesting teams in the league. They've gone from perennial bottom feeder to now one of the better teams in the league. And that, of course, is a lot due in part to maybe 2023 coach of the year, Kevin Stefanski. What a job he's done. There are a lot of really, really good players on this team. A lot of them on the defensive side of the ball. Amazing defense led by, in my opinion, probably the best defensive player in the entirety of the NFL in Miles Garrett. He really, truly is an unstoppable force, like the X Factor says. Now, things are a little bit less clear on the offensive side of the ball. I like the offensive line, but we have some things to figure out in totality, I'll say. You know, the Joe Flacco run has been something so far, I'll say that. I don't know if it's been good or whatever he's thrown a lot of interceptions and a lot of touchdowns Joe Flacco has been crushing it I would say but he's obviously not the future of this team he's a 38 year old quarterback they signed mid-season because they are running through quarterbacks like it's nothing several quarterbacks have played but actually before we start this rebuild I hear my mom calling she's telling me to take out the trash so we'll do that and then we can go ahead and jump in so yeah we are taking a penalty of over 70 million this first year, but it's going to make things way easier over the course of this. We'll find our quarterback and hopefully one that is a good guy. And it's not the biggest thing. I want them to play well first and foremost, obviously. That's the only thing that matters. But yeah, we uh, definitely take a massive cap penalty, but it's going to help us be a whole lot better in the future because we're not going to be paying, you know, 50 or 60 million to a whatever quarterback whose best days may in fact be behind him. Now, if you look at the rest of this team, a lot of guys are under contract for a long time. And Nick Chubb, when healthy, is one of the best running backs in the NFL. I think for a while he was number one, but McCaffrey's just on such another level at this point. And, and Nick Chubb, obviously, the unfortunate injury uh, really hurts his case. But he's going to be healthy for this rebuild, which is awesome. He is such a good player, just doesn't get enough love. It's mind-boggling. He breaks so many tackles, forces so many misses, has decent enough home run speed, even though that's not what he's known for. Tremendous power runner. Love Nick Chubb. Denzel Ward is a beast. Amari Cooper just had the best receiving game in Browns history, which is saying something considering they had the Josh Gordon run where he was just about the best receiver in the NFL. Incredible, but a lot of really good fun players on this team. One of the best tight ends in the league in David Njoku. I love this Brown squad. I really wish I could root for them more, but, um, you know, I don't love ownership and I don't love some of the decisions they've made. But I guess until further notice, our QB of the future is DTR, Dorian Thompson Robinson. And we'll try to go ahead and just dominate training camp, get him a skill point. And yeah, he's probably not going to be the guy. I recognize that. Although it's my first year playing fantasy football and I'm doing a dynasty league, and I drafted DTR way down the board, and it's kind of like, hey, I'll take a shot, see what I got, and he's actually played as a rookie, which is a little bit surprising, but things have kind of lined up for it, and uh, health has been a problem for him as well, but I like DTR, you know what, he's a good athlete, and that's a lot of modern offenses. That's a lot of what playing the quarterback position is. And obviously there are different play styles. Not everyone needs to be athletic. And first and foremost, the most important attribute of any quarterback along with accuracy is what's going on upstairs. How can they, you know, read a defense, know where to go with the football and exploit different coverages. But I'll tell you what, there are certain offenses where they're making use of just really good athleticism. And that's been enough for certain teams. So, you know, if you get the right offensive coordinator, guy like Shane Steichen, right? You can utilize just athleticism as the, I guess, the building blocks, the foundation of your offense. This is also going to be one of those interesting rebuilds where we actually don't need to draft a corner at all. We have, if we're able to keep Greg Newsom, who's usually available in free agency. So I wonder what the Browns cap situation looks like. We did obviously free up a lot of room. We we're going to take a penalty right away, but then we're going to be fine in you know a year or two. But Greg Newsom, Martin Emerson, Denzel Ward, that's a tremendous trio. A little bit of alliteration there for you. And then I like the safeties as well. At least Grant Delpit 
is fantastic. I'll say that. But, um, yeah, usually there are really good corners that you can get down the board in the draft. And we just don't really need to draft corner in this one. Although, and Martin Emerson is slow as hell, by the way, in this drill. Um, but we could potentially draft a corner to move to safety if one looks good enough or move maybe, you know, Greg Newsom to free safety actually could be pretty interesting. Although I think he's great as a corner. You won't really need to, but saying for flexibility of this team, make it as good as possible. Greg Newsom could move to free safety, I guess. Grant Delp is really a strong safety. And he did, I would say, both at LSU. He was so unreal. Sophomore year, Grant Delp is one of the best safeties I've ever seen at the college level. He was an incredible player. It's nice to see that he's finally, like, really developing into his own here in the NFL. He's been a solid player, but I think Grant Delp is really good now. So, we had a lot of pieces to work with. They basically have another safety in Jeremiah Wusu koromoa He's not really a linebacker. What we could do is just move JOK back to safety. Then Grant Delpit would have to move to free safety, JOK to strong safety. And that actually could end up being really interesting for this team. Not something I really considered going in, but that actually might be smart down the line, depending on the talent in the draft and what we're able to acquire through free agency. That might be the way to go. But I don't think the Browns have a first round pick. I think the Texans still have one more first rounder from the Browns, I'm pretty sure. I'd also love to develop Elijah Moore. I think he can end up being a really good player. I think his he would be best if he was utilized similarly to the way the 49ers use Debo Samuel. Obviously not the same level of player. But Elijah Moore is someone who kind of has like some running back type ability. And you saw a lot of that at Ole Miss. Hasn't really come to pass so far in the NFL. Wasn't really a great fit with the Jets, clearly. Just was never really targeted or utilized that much. But I'm hoping that, you know, he might have a true breakout with the Browns at some point. Uh, hook him horns, Marquise Goodwin, by the way. Just noticed him. And defensively, giant legend Dalvin Tomlinson. But it's a good foundation. We're going to have to upgrade on guys like Anthony Walker, Shelby Harris, probably even Dalvin Tomlinson. See, only Taki Taki, I think, is better in real life than a 76 overall. However, he's 27 years old with normal development and not even that close to above an 80 overall. Just not really sure there's a whole lot for us here. He's going to be good for his contract, but those are guys I need to actively look to replace. I could also see a, a point in this rebuild where Jack Conklin is just moved. He does have four years left on his deal, but it gets increasingly more expensive. It's not too bad this year, but next year it basically doubles. And then the year after that goes up to close to 20 mil where it's going to stay for another year. And behind him is the mountain that is Dewan Jones out of Ohio State. 6'8", 375 has played well this year. I want to build around Dewan Jones. So it just doesn't really make sense to pay Jack Conklin all this money. But the penalty for trading him right now is probably going to be a little bit more than I want. Jed Wills, I think... I will end up extending if I can. I always sign him in free agency in other rebuilds, but now I don't have to. He's just here. In the game, he's just got star dev, and he's young, and he's good enough. In real life, I think Browns fans have been wanting more from him. I don't think... I think some of the criticism is unfair, but it's not like he's some superstar left tackle. Could he end up being really good? Maybe. But um, for rebuild purposes... He's going to be awesome. It's just, are we going to have the money to bring these guys back? Again, the cap penalty that we took is immense. It's significant. But the good news about that is a lot of guys are under contract. So of the guys that we have to bring back, maybe Corey Bohorquez, Kareem Hunt, Shelby Harris, Anthony Walker, I can let some of those guys go. I love Maurice Hurst. It's my guy. He was playing so well this season. I mean, unbelievably and then got injured, season over, sucks. But he was playing so well, but one year left on his deal, not rated appropriately in the game, it, it makes it tough to bring him back. Zedarius Smith is another tough one. Good player, older. 30 years old, but superstar development. He's only going to get worse, but he's good right now. Depending on what our record is at the midseason mark, that'll depend on whether we keep him or not. If we're, you know, 
looking like we're going to make a playoff run, which I think is likely, we're going to keep him. We're going to try to win it. If not, he's somebody that could get moved. This actually could work to our benefit here. Strengths of the class, wide receiver, quarterback, left tackle, at least two positions there that I would consider drafting in the first round could definitely trade up. So I think quarterback and wide receiver could be a three-star type thing. Two-star, Larry Fitzgerald, Calvin Johnson, Greg Jennings. Let me see two stars for it. Yeah, same thing at quarterback and wide receiver. So we can sign a two-star. I'll sign one of the big names. It's a little bit more fun. But three stars going to have to be something else. Maybe wide receiver and tight end. We don't really need a tight end. So, no. Wide receiver, well, we don't need a corner. It'll be safety and wide receiver. Probably smarter to do corner, but I'll mix it up. And a lot of good outside linebackers in this class. That could work to our benefit as well if we're looking for a real pairing on the other side of Miles Garrett. So, we'll look at outside linebacker heavily, but it's only going to be one-star guys at this point. So, uh, we'll see if there's anyone particularly good to go after, but not going to make any decision right now, obviously. Okay, interesting. So we're three and three. Where does that even put me? We're half competing, half not. I thought that said breakout quarterback, but it's Grant Delpit. Did I click the right one? Or is it broken per usual? I think just broken. What, Madden? No way. Surely everything works perfectly all the time. Oh, it doesn't? Yeah. You've played the game before, probably. And if you haven't, well, I'm not just bitching for no reason. It's <laughs> it's a miracle that anything works correctly. Also, just saw Cedric Tillman. I like Cedric Tillman. I think Cedric Tillman could end up being a starting caliber wide receiver. I don't know that we're going to develop him much in this rebuild, but I like Cedric Tillman. He might have been the best Tennessee receiver prospect in this past year's draft. And I know that sounds wild, especially as a Giants fan with Jalen Hyatt, who won the Boletnikoff Award for best receiver in college football last year. But as far as NFL prospect goes, Tillman might have been the more complete player. Hyatt, obviously, more of a game breaker with his elite speed. But um, yeah, Cedric Tillman, I think, would be a really quality player. Three and three. This is our decision. We trade players now or we don't at all. We're going to be negative 39 million so we actually can't bring anybody back here, which again, isn't too much of a surprise. We'll end up picking up the fifth year option on Greg Newsom, of course, but nobody here is coming back. Unfortunately, who would I actually have brought back among this group? Harrison Bryant, maybe. No first round pick, as I mentioned either. But if I have to be negative in cap room next season to be better the year after, I actually think that's a pretty fair compromise. I'm going to try and trade Kareem Hunt. And we're not doing that well, obviously. See, only Taki Taki down to Matthew Adams or even Jacob Phillips really isn't even too bad. Or Tony Fields. Might try to trade Sione Taki Taki just because he's in the final year of his deal. We're not going to be able to bring back the players I actually want to keep if we hold on to everybody. Juan Thornhill is fine. I might end up trading him as well at some point. Anybody else? It's just really maybe Zadarius Smith. If I can get a first round pick by trading Zadarius Smith, I'm going to do it. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Kareem Hunt, Sione Taki Taki, Zadarius Smith, and a second round pick next year help the Rams on their playoff hunts this year. We get a first round pick in return. Hopefully they fall off. That ends up being a really valuable pick. That's a great trade for us to start. But obviously it kind of goes from us competing to taking a bit of a step back. Now, we still have some decent players here, no question. I don't want to... Uh. Do I just trade Jack Conklin now, if I'm going to do that? Yeah, we might as well. Also, Alex Wright probably ends up being a starter next year. Decent young player. He was a developmental guy at a UAB and is just a big athletic player. And with development, could end up being really, really solid. So we'll see if he gets a true shot next year. Shelby Harris probably will be on the move as well. I'd love to get the Giants second and third round picks. We'll see if that's possible. Obaniah Okoronkwo, I wouldn't be afraid to trade either. 
out of the cornerbacks. I mean, Mike Ford, we're not going to re-sign anyway. And probably one more pick might make this go through. So it's a fifth this year. I would like to hold on to my third this year, but maybe a third in 2026 will make this go through. And that's exactly what happens. Jack Conklin, Shelby Harris, Mike Ford, a fifth this year and a third in 2026 for a second and a third this year from the Giants. Not exactly getting a ton back for Jack Conklin. It's a decent return. It'd be a great return in real life. But here in the game, this makes Jed Wills a starter. Dewan Jones, of course. Uh, not that Jed Wills wasn't a starter already, but when we reordered the depth chart, they moved some things around. So just to avoid that, we'll just trade them. Defensively, yeah, I guess Matthew Adams can start now. That's fine. This is just, again, more of a developmental year is what I've kind of decided. Just three and three with a 60 overall quarterback. We'll take a, a step back. The Browns are doing an incredible job in real life. Just a little bit tougher to navigate here uh, under the circumstances. So 2024 cap room is going to be non-existent, but 2025 is going to be so much easier. And we're actually just winning now. We've won two in a row, five and three. You know what? Maybe the shakeup is what this team needed to step up. Okay, this is interesting. This is interesting. So Junior Lawrence from Washington, 6'5", 232, and has a lot of A's everywhere. A awareness, break tackle, catching traffic, deep route running, medium route running, release, run block, short route, spectacular catch, stamina, stiff arm. He looks incredible. Good athlete as well. Not elite, but good. And then the quarterback... Parker Shepard from Texas A&M, 6'3", 237. A deep accuracy, A medium, A short, A under pressure. Elite potential throw power. What am I going to do in this draft? I mean, you see a potential generational type receiver and then an amazing quarterback. We know Lawrence is a top five player in this class and he it looks well warranted. It looks like he's very deserving. It looks incredible. I saw him in the upgrade screen, but I hadn't even mentioned Luke Whipler up to this point, the interior offensive lineman out of Ohio State. Browns got him way down the board. It seems like they had steals, and I said this at the time too, it seems like they had steals all over their 2023 NFL draft class. I think they did a great job, and it's, it's probably going to be a part of why they're going to find sustained success throughout these 2020s, or at least mid-2020s, right? We'll see what happens long term. But we did not end up making the playoffs. Eight and nine. It looked like when we were five and three, we we're going to have a pretty good chance to make them, but just didn't. DTR threw more interceptions than touchdowns. 3,000 yards passing. Nick Chubb was still great, as you'd expect. No receivers near 1,000 yards. Only Marquise, or only Amari Cooper got even remotely close. Marquise Goodwin pretty, uh, put up pretty good numbers based on where my expectations were. Anthony Walker played well. Miles Garrett only had six and a half sacks. What's going on with Cleveland Playbook? I mean, that's just ridiculous. I gotta, I gotta change playbooks. I mean, six and a half sacks is deplorable. And maybe we were down, our offense was really bad, but our defense was ranked 31st in the league. Now nah, we gotta, we gotta make some changes. Season recap has the 49ers beating the Chargers in the Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes wins league MVP. Rasheed Rice, Offensive Rookie of the Year. Mahomes really wasn't winning many MVPs in my Chiefs rebuild. Bizarre. But I don't know. It feels like you get nerfed when you're actually controlling the team. You might not do anything differently other than it's just you are the user of that team. Everything else could be CPU generated. The game just recognizes you as a loser or as the user and makes you a loser. It's extremely frustrating. Just for some reason... You know, you can do everything the same, but if the, if the CPU recognizes that you're controlling the team, you just lose games and don't win awards as much. I'm, I don't know, I'm a conspiracy theorist now on franchise mode, but it's frustrating, man. I'm just trying to make a good video, and that means rebuilding a team to the best of my abilities, and oftentimes the game likes to get in the way. Picking up the fifth-year option on Greg Newsom. Everybody else has to walk. Anthony Walker up to star dev. That's cool. But these guys just can't stay. We don't have the money. And Parker Shepard is a top five talent as well. This draft is something else. 
I don't know what we're going to do. I really don't because the players are incredible. Dominique Jefferson I meant to check out because of Scrambler archetype. I was hoping for elite speed. He does have elite throw power. I mean, if we can get in position for that top quarterback, that's probably the move. But man, there are a lot of good looking options here. And I found it interesting that at 4.7 speed, Dominique Jefferson was the seventh fastest quarterback. So there are six guys that might be able to fly. We're getting closer and closer. And the first quarterback, I mean, he's he's really fast, but nothing crazy. I haven't seen a 4.2 speed quarterback in the game in some time. Obviously, it doesn't come along very often, if at all, in real life. But in the game, it's an archetype you can get is the 4.2, 4.3 speed QBs. And I haven't really seen any of them. Could be some really good linebackers down the board in this class. I like the look of a few of these guys. Damian Pearson from Washington, or I think maybe even said Washington State. A lot of these guys look really good from Washington. And hoping Washington loses to Texas coming up. Super excited for the college football playoff. Obviously, really nice to have a horse in the race. Are there any just massively large defensive tackles in this class? There's one that's definitely undersized but makes up for it with good finesse moves, good tackling. That yeah, looks good down the board. Larry Hayden from Texas. Hook him, speaking of Washington in the college football playoff. He could be decent. A pass block, A awareness, A to C impact blocking and run blocking. Might be worth the mid-round pick. Okay, so Junior Lawrence is expected to be the, the third pick to the Bears. Show me our team here somewhere. Uh, number 11, that's not so bad. Are these quarterbacks not expected to go? Shepard at number six. Okay, I mean, it's not a tremendous move up. Obviously, I'm an insane person. I'm trying to think, how do I get both? How do we get both on the team? Junior Lawrence, I don't know if I would say generational for sure, because the athleticism is just a little bit better than average. But I would say, I would lean generational. I would lean generational. And then Parker Shepard just looks incredible, whether he's at generational build or not. How do I get both? I would need pick number four and pick number six. I would have to trade a lot. I can't trade players. It would have to be just picks. But in my opinion, the draft class looks so good that it's worth it to kind of mortgage my future in a way to move up to secure my future. How about that? How about that? So, I mean, it definitely could be difficult. We need a quarterback. I know that much. ETR up to a 66. I have pick number 11, two seconds, two thirds, a first next year and a first in 2026. It's just, is it gonna be enough? The way to do it would be to get pick number three and four. And that's going to be extremely hard to do. But I'm doing it. This is going to be a highly divisive move. But these two players look way too good. This secures our offense for the future. And we already have guys under contract. They're going to be really expensive now, these draft picks for taking them so high. But we are trading a first this year, next year, the year after that, a second this year, a third this year, and a second in 2026, leaving us with not that many draft picks in the future. But I think these two players are so good that it was entirely worth the move up. Our picks going forward, we have a second, number 59, number 79, a couple day three picks, and the next year it's a three as our first pick, a five, and then in 2026, our first pick is a four. So I've traded everything. I've gone full Los Angeles Rams trading my picks away. However, unlike the Rams, I am actually going to be using that to draft players, not trade for established guys. So, less need. I'm doing you a disservice, general manager of the Rams. Not fully embracing the strategy, but to some degree, back-to-back -back meatball head uh, off the board. I mean, some of the biggest heads I've ever seen back-to-back, -back, and I think it's the same player model is a good reason why. Junior Lawrence will be the first one. Bonafide wide receiver number one. 6'5", 232 out of UW, and there's a great UW receiver this year, Romo Dunze, and another one, Jalen Polk, and maybe even another pretty good one in Jalen McMillan. Junior Lawrence, not especially fast, but ran, ran really well. 
in the low 4-4s, mid 4-4s, and the attributes are incredible. He catches the ball really well, and he's an amazing route runner. If he's not a generational player, I'd be surprised. Welcome to the Rams. No. Why did I talk about Les Snead? Welcome to the Browns. Only 89 speed and acceleration, so he's a bit slow. But he also is 6'5", 230. So you're not expecting blazing speed, but 89 agility, 91 change of direction is incredible. Certainly far from a Calvin Johnson build, but I think he's going to be really, really good technically. And with that route running, catching the football. And I don't know. He He's a little slow. No question. Is he generational? Not sure. And is Parker Shepard? Not sure also. 6'3", 227. Key ratings are amazing, and he's got an elite arm. I'm pretty much sold. Is he bad at anything? Throwing the runs just okay. That's kind of it. Awareness is great. Break sack, solid. Deep, medium, short accuracy. Throw under pressure, all as good as they really can be. Welcome to the Browns. Future QB1. 94 throw power, 77 speed, 85 acceleration. And the Browns maybe have finally drafted their QB1. Looked like it could have been for a minute with Baker Mayfield. Didn't end up materializing in Cleveland. I think four head coaches, if you count interim head coaches, during his first three years probably didn't help him very much. But, or was it first four years? Might have been first four. But maybe Parker Shepard could be what Baker Mayfield couldn't. Going right back to Texas. Of course, Baker Mayfield, Texas kid, went to Texas Tech, transferred to Oklahoma, which I'm aware is not in Texas. But Shepard's from A&M. Hate to draft an Aggie, but had to do it. He looked too good. And now we have to make the most of these picks. If there's nothing that I really want, I need to trade down for future picks. Would have to be done. But I think linebacker could be the way to go. We have two picks. Lamar Tillman, I like the look of. And we also have Damian Pearson, who I scouted and liked. Deacon Goodwin, who I scouted and liked. Larry Hayden has B run blocking as well. I mean, this is a good looking offensive lineman. I don't think we need him. But if nobody else is available when we pick again, that could be the way to go. Tillman, 6'1", 245, 21 years old at Ole Miss. Our next Patrick Willis. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. He... I don't know. It's good tackling, great tackling, pretty good play rec and zone coverage. I don't really know which linebacker to draft. I would say in order. I mean, Eric Hankins from Texas looks really solid as well because he's elite speed at middle linebacker. And then B zone, B tackle, B block shed, C hit power. That matters a bit more at middle linebacker than it does at outside linebacker. For prospects, Damian Pearson looks really, really good. He might look the best overall. I don't know. It's tough to say. And then Chris Haunting of Hill House. Is that a show? Haunting of Hill House? It's a show or a movie. I've don't. never seen it. Don't know it. But I've seen commercials. A finesse moves, A tackle. 21 years old at LSU. Great speed. I like that. I think because there are so many players that I'm in between on, it might be better to trade back, get more value, and just... Take a shot on whichever one falls to me. Now, we might miss out on the best player by doing that, but we do get more value overall, and I don't necessarily have to make the wrong decision. I'll kind of get my decision made for me. In real life, you wouldn't do this, but in the game, when I'm really not sure about these guys, I think it does make some sense. All right, I'm trading this second round pick and then four day three picks for two third round picks from the Bears, my favorite trade partner in this video. And we're not really moving down that much. And we're picking up a third round pick this year and next year, which is great because we don't really have much in the way of picks next year. And we really didn't move down all that much. And pretty much all the same players, maybe even all the same players are available. I think I want in order Lamar Tillman, Damian Pearson, and then maybe Chris Hillhouse or the guard if he gets there. Let's take Lamar Tillman first. Outside linebacker from Ole Miss. Does have hidden dev. 85 speed. 90 acceleration. Like that start. Not too bad. And you gotta love hidden dev always. 
It's just so much more satisfying to see that blue gem looking icon as opposed to the brown. And it might only be a difference between star and normal, not that much, but the blue gem just looks so good. And here we are round three, the guards off the board. The second linebacker that I wanted the most is off the board. It's down to Deacon Goodwin and Eric Hankins. Goodwin, only 21 years old, great speed, elite acceleration. A play rec, A tackle, B zone coverage, B awareness. That's a really good start. Eric Hankins, six foot two twenty six, a year older, but does have elite speed. That's what I'd be drafting. I'd be drafting for elite speed versus just great, but great at outside linebacker is different than great at middle linebacker. The middle linebackers tend to be faster. Sammy Hartwell said, hey, Roger Goodell, up yours. I'm not doing your damn combine, but don't think we're going to be drafting him. Toss up between Deacon Goodwin and Eric Hankins. To me, I think I am going to lean Goodwin here. Uh, am I? Block shed is a C compared to a B, and that's probably significant from middle to outside linebacker. Tackling is better, but pursuit on Hankins is probably just a C, maybe even a D, but probably a C. D or F would be incredibly shocking. I'm going to go Deacon Goodwin, or Deacon Godwin. He's got normal dev, 85 speed, 91 acceleration. Looks a lot like the linebacker we just drafted. Not sure if that was the right call. We'll find out in a minute. But he just looked the best overall. It was really close, but I just think I gave him the edge. We have a round two to three projected player here. Projected to go undrafted, or a true talent is round two to three. Slot only, but great speed. Great kick return, really solid catching and short route running. Only a slot guy, but... The value is there. He's around two to three talent that we're getting all the way down the board. Again, think that's worth it. 90 agility, pretty nice. We have our kick returner, Chris Ogle. Let's see how we did. I think that went pretty well. 80 overall for Junior Lawrence. Again, not quite generational probably, but very, very good. 87 catch in traffic, 87 spectacular catch, 82 catching. Again, speed, acceleration, not amazing, but 88 release. Route running is all really solid. 91 change of direction. Every trait you could want. I think that was worth it. And Parker Shepard is the best pick of all. He's a 79 overall strong arm, 78 field general, 75 improviser. Hidden dev QB with solid accuracy. Awareness is already really high for a rookie. That's boosting his overall a bit. I like ideal decision, decision maker, throwaway style. I, I, all looks pretty good. He just should be really solid. And it's tougher to get high overall quarterbacks. 79 overall is one of the better ones that I've drafted. Lamar Tillman's a 73, 72 for both Godwin and Ogle. And we'll see what the rest of the draft looked like. And I, I think we did well. We got the number one and number two player in the class. The number one overall pick was a really good left tackle in Nick Gresham from USC. Good running back down the board. There's a safety. That looked pretty good. Jason Smallwood, I would have probably drafted if he got to me. Just looked too good. 6'4", 196. Only 20 uh, years old as well. 91 speed at 6'4", with good coverage. And I, we just didn't really need a corner. But Jason Smallwood, I mean, definitely a lot of size at 6'4". And only star dev. But we could have moved somebody to safety. Could have got something going on. He looked really good. So if he got to me... I just probably would have drafted him, but he didn't. So we obviously went a different direction. Really good tight end, Larry Hopkins from Notre Dame. Another good school for producing Notre Dame or, or producing tight ends, but Tyler Eifert also went to the Bengals, Notre Dame tight end. Kendall Sampson, I missed. 75 overall with Hidden Dev. Is 23 years old, but he looks great. Great speed, tackle, acceleration, hit power pursuit. Everything's really good for him except for coverage. But I don't really think I ever heavily considered drafting him. Damian Pearson was a 74 with normal dev. I was really close to drafting him. I probably would have if he got to that next pick. Looks like the linebacker we have, though. Just slightly higher overall. Larry Hayden ends up being a 73 overall left guard, but also only normal development. I like how his face and arms don't even come close to matching. Big tan on his face, but he covers his arms. 
Eric Hankins ends up being a 72 overall with normal development, but he does have 90 speed. So definitely really good. I think we probably just could have uh, could have taken either. I think they were both about the same. I think they both end up being a 72 overall with normal development. That's pretty good. It's not amazing. Can't get star dev on everybody. But I think that was a pretty good draft for us. Now, we did get worse overall in terms of where we were last year overall-wise. I think we were slightly higher than an 85. But we have our QB of the future now. We have a big-time wide receiver. Amari Cooper might be somebody that doesn't get retained. He often finds his way in free agency. 88 overall. Final year of his deal here in 2024. So that could be an interesting situation. But three solid receivers now. Great quarterback. I think the offense is going to be amazing in 2024. And then defensively, Mahmoud Diabate at middle linebacker. No. That's right, we lost two. I kind of forgot that we lost two. Um, I would move, I guess, JOK to middle linebacker and then start Godwin. I mean, I guess. No, you know what I'll do? I'll move Tillman to middle linebacker. 6'1", 245. He's got the size for it. Lock shedding needs to be upgraded, but he'll move to middle linebacker. He'll move there and hopefully end up being very solid for us. 96 is not a middle linebacker number. I'll give you something in the 50s. Give him 52. It's like the best middle linebacker number that there is, in my opinion. Patrick Willis, also Ole Miss. Ray Lewis. Was Dequell Jackson 52 for the Browns? I can't quite remember. He was. He was. He was also a beast. The defensive line needs an upgrade. No question. I didn't really focus on it because we had other needs to fill in this draft. But defensive end, interior defensive line, we need to upgrade. Right now, it's Obanaya, Okoronkwo, and Sione Ika. But I think focusing on the D-line could be the way to go this next draft. But we don't really have much in the way of picks. So we're just going to we're staying pat right now. Ronnie Hickman might have to play a bit. It's certainly going to be a bit of a building year. That's for sure. I think we're still going to be good. But... I don't know how I don't know how good, right? It's a bit presumptuous, but I do think that Parker Shepard's gonna have superstar dev or higher. We're gonna find out in a minute if that ends up being true. Because if we get one skill point, he gets upgraded to an 80 overall. And when that happens, he'll gain an ability slot if he has superstar dev or better. So we're gonna find out. Star Dev would still be good for a 79 overall 22-year-old rookie quarterback, but obviously you want Superstar and Superstar X-Factor. Superstar is less important than X-Factor, obviously, but I'm saying it's like, if it's Superstar, it's like, that's fine, which we won't know exactly until probably the mid-season mark, but X-Factor is the big one. The reason I say that, because like that does sound really obvious, but if he wins Rookie of the Year, which a rookie quarterback is likely to, he gets superstar dev really easily, so it, it's not even really a problem. And the game upgrades hidden development like it's superstar, so for half the season, he basically has superstar dev anyway. But if he has X-Factor, you don't get X-Factor from winning Rookie of the Year. So that would be, obviously, a huge deal. But if he has star, it's cool. If he has superstar, it's fine. But if he's X-Factor, it's amazing. I know this sounds like really, really obvious, but I hopefully, or hopefully you get the point I'm trying to make. And we're going to find out if he has at least superstar development. Parker Shepard playing up to an 80. But when we upgrade him, I'm going to do field general. It does end up boosting him anyway. Only four slots. But one of them is an ability slot. Minimum superstar dev for Parker Shepard. Now, again, I wish the front seven we're better, especially the defensive line. We just need Miles Garrett to carry everything. That's what it's going to come down to. The rookie Lawrence can play in the slot. That's fine. And then... Is this also a rookie Lawrence? Lamar Tillman. Close. It's and Mark were 3-4 and four with the number 7 scoring offense and the number 7 passing yards defense. Number 20 total, though. So, it's not that great. Our defense has just struggled lately. Parker Shepard does have abilities. We know that. 
and he has superstar dev. Obviously, as I saying earlier, wishing he would have superstar X Factor, obviously the best one, but uh, unfortunately it was not to be. It's only superstar, which honestly, as I said earlier, might as well just be star for a rookie quarterback, but it is what it is. You can't guarantee that he's gonna win Offensive Rookie of the Year, but he probably will. So as you can see, we have 48 million in 2025 cap room. If we were still paying the previous quarterback, we wouldn't have the ability to bring back any of these players. And there are a couple of big ones. Might have to reallocate some of our money. Elijah Moore coming back, I think is gonna be pretty easy. 10 million per year is honestly a little bit much for him. I'd like to bring it down slightly while increasing the years. It can get up to about 10 mil, but the first couple years are not gonna be near as expensive. So he's back, that's big. Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa, I'd like to bring back as well. He's also pretty expensive because the game thinks he is an edge rusher. And that's a lot of money. But I think he's probably worth it. 24 years old, should get into the 90s. I should have moved him to middle linebacker probably. But he also returns 25 million left for three main players. I don't think anybody else in there. Dustin Hopkins, we don't really need. Chubb's going to be 12 mil per year, maybe. Cooper, probably 15. Jed Wills would be more affordable. He, he definitely needs to come back. Five-year deal, a little over 10 a year. He wants a bit more money. And then 15 left for Cooper and Chubb. Amari Cooper wants 15 mil a year, just about. I'd give him a five-year extension. He's still playing well. And Amari Cooper is back. It's a big get. Five years, probably a little bit too much. And then we could potentially franchise tag Nick Chubb and just increase the offer on Jed Wills. Obviously wouldn't be able to do much in free agency at that point. Where can we save money? That's the big question right now. Cooper, but obviously we just extended him, so he's not an option. Penalty would be pretty big as well. Don't really want to get rid of any of these players. Hopkins, I guess, can go, but he's just going to walk in free agency. What's Junior Lawrence, by the way? Is he superstar dev? Just star. Man, that is disappointing. But we would end up rebounding and making the playoffs, actually winning the division at 10 and seven. And it's not like we were especially far or played especially well this year. Three straight losses followed by three straight wins followed by back-to-back -back losses and then our bye week. And that's where we, we were when you saw me last. Three straight wins and then two, only two more losses and four more wins the rest of the year. So we actually played really well. Touchdown loss with a division game, whatever. Lost by three to the Chiefs, who are always so good. This is a team that's capable of playing very, very well. If we get hot at the right time, you know what? We can make a real run here. And you can see Parker Shepard had a great rookie season there in the top right. He was second in the league in passing yards, third in passing touchdowns, passer rating not quite as good with 19 touchdowns for the rookie, but 4,500 passing yards and 38 touchdowns is pretty incredible for a rookie quarterback. He's only going to continue to get better. Nick Chubb was still really good. I'd like to see his yards per carry get over five, which would be crazy, but we've seen it happen in Madden before. I want to see it happen again. David Njoku was incredible before I recorded this video, or let me rephrase that. The, I started recording this video and then stopped, took some time off. The Browns then played the Jets, and David Njoku had a big game. And now I'm back recording after that has ended. He's so good. Played really well tonight. Did fumble, but played really well other than that. I have like 130 yards receiving as a tight end. Junior Lawrence over 1,000 yards receiving. Seven touchdowns. Amari Cooper had a decent season. Probably didn't need to pay him if we're being honest. Miles Garrett played better than he did last year. 19 TFLs, 12 sacks. But we're not really getting a ton of pressure on the quarterback. The rest of our D-line needs to step up. Although we are forcing plenty of interceptions, plenty of turnovers via interception, I should say. We need to improve the defensive line. Sometimes, you know, if you want to help out your pass defense, get a better pass rush. And we just don't really have a great defensive line right now. It's really just Miles Garrett. Now, we do beat the Chargers barely in round one of the playoffs. We don't have draft picks this year or really even next year. 
I don't know how we're going to improve our pass rush. Typically, there are not good players down the board if you're looking for pass rushers. At defensive tackle, maybe, but defensive end and outside linebacker, I really don't recall seeing very many this entire year, if at all. That's kind of a flaw of these draft class generators. I feel like you don't see any unless you're drafting in the first round or maybe even the second but really the first round these pass rushers are just not very good off the edge the defensive tackles are but edge rushers definitely not division round against the chiefs we lost to him in the regular season we'll lose to him again in the playoffs and we are headed to the off season Salary cap's not in a great spot, negative 31 mil, but keep in mind that's accounting for the 2024 year, not 2025. So now that it shifts to 2025, we have 9 mil in available salary cap. And we do need to extend some players. Parker Shepard surely won Offensive Rookie of the Year. I'd bet just about anything, and he did, as I said, and he doesn't get upgraded to Superstar X Factor because that doesn't happen. So pretty much everything came to fruition but Shepard still a great pickup for us. Gets another ability slot, more accuracy, never a bad thing. Like to get Thoreau on the run into the 80s. Thoreau under pressure is already really high. Awareness, again, was super high when we drafted him. He's a beast. He is a monster player. We just got to get a better defense. The offense is going to figure itself out. I really, I should have franchise tagged Amari Cooper and traded him. Yeah, I should have done that. And then... Well, we have two receivers that can probably just bear the load of the offense in Junior Lawrence and Elijah Moore. And then our third can just be whatever, right? Mari Cooper to a five-year deal was done in haste. I made that decision way too quickly. That was, that was a mistake. Chiefs win the Super Bowl. Dak wins MVP. Of course, we don't see any rookies for Rookie of the Year, even though we know AFC Offensive Rookie of the Year was our quarterback. And did we draft anybody on defense? A couple linebackers, but I didn't see them get any skill points, so it's highly unlikely that they are in that conversation for Rookie of the Year. We'll go to re-sign players. We know it's Jed Wills and Nick Chubb. Really can't afford to let Nick Chubb go. Running backs are really important in simulation, in my opinion, and I think tackle's a little bit easier to replace, but I don't really want to let him go either. We have $9 million. Chubb is a candidate for a franchise tag. And we have a little bit more money now. So we should be able to bring back Jedrick Wills. I'm just going to have to pay him a little bit more than I wanted, which is fine. This is still a pretty good contract for him. Jedrick Wills returns. And we will withdraw the offer on Nick Chubb. Right? And then we should be able to franchise tag him. But I don't see the option. Oh, there it is. You said to back out. So it's 16 million. We go further into the negative now. But again, that's okay. Because we're just trying to keep the band together. We're going to free up more space next year. And the franchise tag is just to keep the band together, as I said. So Chubb's under the franchise tag, but it's highly unlikely that I trade him. My penalty for trading Amari Cooper would be 37 million. That'd be the one. That was that was such a mistake. Such a mistake. Wow, great corner at the top here. Adrian Ridley, 6'2", 204. Number one projected player right now. Really good speed. He's going to be a great player. Obviously, we don't need him. We need a big-time pass rusher. And we need value. So we can't really take one at the top of the draft. We don't have the picks. We need one to fall to us. And just don't know how likely that is. Round two to three, Bernard Montague. They're usually just not very good. It's, <laughs> you won't find a steal down the board generally. Maybe you guys have. I really have not even noticed any. I've, I've just sorted through draft classes, you know, after every season of every rebuild. I never really find any that look like particularly good. Now, maybe Theo Bradley could be good. He looked okay, but just unlikely. Another draft class without a really heavy defensive tackle, unfortunately. It's annoying. I feel like we've been without those guys for a while now. I think my method is going to be an interesting one, the one that I don't employ very often, which is just take a chance and hope I get lucky with a dev trade. We do have a pick at the top of the third round. It's probably best to just trade out of that and get maybe a second round pick next year. 
I still don't regret the trade up at all for the quarterback and the receiver. I feel like those were the right decisions to make, but obviously now we have other needs to fill and it puts us in a bit of a tough spot. Theo Bradley, day three talent. Don't love that. How good is Kazim Johnson? Decent athlete, B power moves, C finesse moves, B block shed. Might be worth the draft pick to be honest, rather than a trade down. Where's Kazim Johnson on the board here? Will he make it to the next pick? Probably not. We're going to take a chance. 6'2", 255, going to slide down to play defensive end. He's a decent athlete, you know. B power moves, C finesse moves isn't terrible. B block should be awareness, B tackles, all good. Kazim Johnson, welcome to the Browns. 81 strength, 82 speed, 88 acceleration. Okay. We might have done something. I don't think he's going to be a super high overall, but if you give me a 74, I'd be pretty happy with that. You know what? I might take another one. Darren Blake is a defensive end. He looks just very average, but I think that's okay here in the third round. 6'4", 251. Good speed, good acceleration. B play rec, B finesse, moose, C power, moose, C pursuit, C awareness. Only normal dev for him. It was either him or a linebacker that I thought looked pretty good. I just didn't know that we needed a linebacker as much as we really needed to hit on a pass rusher. The defensive tackles at that point were disappointing. Theo Bradley was very bad, by the way. I think I showed you guys he was a day three true talent. But I bet that outside linebacker's off the board. And of course he is. Just made me think of Reggie Ragland, seeing the name Malcolm Ragland. Reggie Ragland's a name I haven't thought about in a while. Alabama linebacker is pretty good there. And then was he drafted by the Bills? He definitely was a Bill. Don't really remember him being very good in the NFL at all. Is he anywhere else other than a Bill? I, I can't say for certain. You know, he, was he a Brown? Okay, get this. So he was drafted by the Bills, the 41st overall pick in his draft. He was... He never played for him. Played three years in Kansas City, which does sound familiar. Went to the Lions. Sounds vaguely familiar. He was a giant. I can't believe I forgot that. Definitely was a giant. I remember that now. And then he did play on Cleveland in 2022. But um, yeah, not especially great. He actually had a longer career than I would have guessed. 2017 to 2022. That's pretty good. We can get a fourth round pick if we package in these day three selections next year. So let's do that. I saw a 2026 fourth rounder. I'll take it from Tampa. Or I can't... I can definitely make it work. Because you can trade draft picks regardless of salary cap. So um, can I even get a third? a third too much all right i can get a four i'll take a four four is not so bad five six and a seven for a four next year i'll let the cpu handle the rest of the draft kazim johnson's a 68 a little bit worse than i was hoping for doesn't look so bad 74 power move 74 block shed i wonder if coverage is bringing down his overall although i wouldn't think that would impact power rusher his overall might jump up very slightly with a move to defensive end, but I would I doubt it gets to the 70s. Might be, oh, it does. I thought it might be 69. Nice. But it's actually a 70. 70 overall power rush. Play rec is pretty bad. Awareness is low. He might be okay. Do I start him? I mean, it's, it's a younger Alex Wright with a dev trait, essentially. I guess I might as well. It's either him or Obanaya Okoronkwo, right? Or Okoronkwo. Okoronkwo, right? Jesus. I talk professionally. Isn't that amazing? 79 overall for Adrian Ridley, number one overall player in the class. Not really that great, uh, great of a class. We did well enough. Obanaya Okoronkwo. I'm doing it again. Obanaya Okoronkwo is probably someone I could trade. Obo is, I think, what he went by at... Oklahoma, Obo Okoronkwo. Oh, Obanai is not what I'm struggling with, though. I can't say Okoronkwo and lead it to another word with an R. <laughs> it's a nightmare for me right now. It's just my living hell. Now, I think for training camp, we got to use the draft to defensive end, and I might be able to trade Okoronkwo. The only thing is, I have to create some cap space before I do that, so we're going to have to move some money around. Lamar Tillman, star dev, not really a surprise there. Deacon Godwin did not go up to star dev, but Kazim Johnson probably has star. Probably won't be able to move him up 
to uh, being a good starter at any point. I'm going to try it, though. It's probably a mistake, but I don't really have a lot of better options right now. Like, Okoronkwo is better, no question. I'm breaking the world record for a amount of uh, times. That name has been said, by the way, in a video. But he's just too old. And yes, in this game, 28, 29 years old, too old. If you're not great at that point, you're not going to be great. And I mean, it's probably fair. You see very few late breakouts. It does happen, but you're not going to see it happen in a rebuild. I think of guys like Lorenzo Alexander, Demario Davis to a degree. He's an exceptional player now, but he wasn't terrible um, early on in his career. Just wasn't the player that he is now, that's for sure, for the past couple of years. I'm trying to think. Lorenzo Alexander was a name that just really stuck out to me because he had a really late breakout. Um, not really going to do too much more thinking than that, but I'm sure there are more examples. It just doesn't happen that often. Also, this is how I find out that Grant Delpit has been upgraded to Superstar Development. Pretty huge development, if you ask me. That's pretty bit, pretty big for him. And I'm still, like, mixed on whether Juan Thornhill is going to end up being our, like, long-term starting free safety. Got a couple seasons of this rebuild left for sure. So that's going to be a question that we look to answer in the near future. And it just, it's not the biggest need, though. Otherwise, I probably would have fixed it by now. I say fixed. He's fine. But defensive end, defensive tackle. I don't really know what we're going to do about that just yet. We need picks, and I don't have any. David Njoku also got upgraded to Superstar Dev. We've had a lot of dev trade upgrades to this one, just not really for the players that I need to get them. That's the only thing. I'd love for Elijah Moore to be at Star Dev. He's normal. Obviously, the linemen are not going to get upgraded. It just really doesn't happen. Something on the defensive line would be nice. Linebacker. But it, it ends up being Grant Delpit, which is fine. I love Grant Delpit. But... Having it end up being Grant Delpit doesn't really help the rest of our team that much. I need to free up some cap space, so I'm going to restructure some of these contracts, which is adding money to the final year or years of the deal in order to create more space now. So that's going to enable me to trade a guy like Obanaya Okoronkwo. And now, this Dalvin Tomlinson contract is still nuts. We're paying him $20 million. He's a good player, but it's not worth that in Madden. It, it's not. Now, the way this contract is structured, I can't do anything about it this year at all. I would save 2 million to lose 29, essentially, in cap penalties. So I can't do that. I could restructure it, but I think if I don't and wait, I might be able to trade them next year. However, the time to trade Oboe is now. I think we got to move him. One year left on his deal, 30 years old. If I can get anything back for him, I'll be happy. Yaya Diaby is actually a decent offer. What are my picks? Should have a third. No, I have two fours. Have a one next year. Obviously, full set of draft picks in 2027 and 2028. But I need something in 2026. So, we're going to make a move. All right, this is our trade. It's another trade with the Bears. Now, their first round picks not projected to be very high which is why I traded for it, because it'd be easier. But I think they still could be not so good. Also got their second round pick. They have two. It's Obo Okoronkwo, Cam Mitchell, Jerome Ford, and a first in 2028 for a first and a second this year. Gives us a little bit more of something to work with right now. So I, don't, I wouldn't call it a mortgage on our future, just that it makes us a bit more competitive in the near future, and I still think we're going to be good in the future future. So this lets our rookie potential star, or, or well, definitely star, or better development defensive end start. It's not going to be that good, probably. Not going to be that good. If he somehow manages to have a great season and win defensive rookie of the year, well, he could go up to Superstar Dev, and then we might have something, right? And I'm assuming he doesn't have Superstar Dev just because it's unlikely, like with a player down the board. It's possible. We've done it many times before in quantity, but it just, percentage-wise, it doesn't happen that often. Still need help on the interior, but this is kind of where we are right now. Three great corners, and then Darius Rush is fine. 
Safety's good. Linebacker's probably pretty good. And then the offense is really, really solid. It's our specialist, it looks like. Amari Cooper can play the slot. That's fine. Now, Alex Wright cannot play above the actual rookie that we need to develop, Kazim Johnson. Like, he's definitely good. Just obviously very far from great. Well, Kazim Johnson, a strong camp. Plus three to power and finesse moves. That could really be a game changer. Because that takes 74 power moves, that's fine. Now it's up to 77 as a rookie. And you're starting to talk about getting closer to some of the actual, like, top tier draft picks. So maybe a 70 overall gets upgraded to a 71 via training camp. And now he's continued to have a strong preseason. Now he might be up to a 72, 73. Now we have something. All right, Kazim Johnson, go out and get a sack, please. Continue your breakout. That would be incredible for us. It really would be amazing. Go out and do it, please. Two, uh, you're not going to get two. Well, we won, but we allowed a lot of points to the Ravens. 28. How did Kazim Johnson do? They never go well. Oh, hold on a second. I told you I'm here to be great. Coach Kazim Johnson might have actually done it. Now, that, that's a rarity. This does not happen very often, but he just got 10,000 XP. So we're going to take a 60... What? Was he a 68 overall? Right? Maybe even a 67. And now we've turned him into a 73. Just got 10,000 XP. That's probably two skill points. And he might be able to do it again. So you know what? If you can get three, I'll be shocked. I'll be absolutely floored if you can get three. I don't think there's any chance three TFLs happens in the same game for Kazim Johnson. But he's going to be up to a 75 overall as a rookie. It, going into week two. Just got plus one to speed. Only 6k to his next upgrade. More upgrades to power moves. Does have star dev. That's not a surprise. Power moves is into the 80s. That happened pretty quick. But it was a 74, so it wasn't like especially low. He's only 21 years old. We might have actually found a diamond in the rough with Kazim Johnson. But this is actually a great kind of uh, representation of how this works in real life. Is... They might not actually be all that amazing when you draft them, but there's something there. But then it's the development, the coaching, bringing this guy up to what he has the potential to become. And we're seeing it happen live. So maybe it's not the issue of just, oh, he's either a star, and this is certainly true, something you guys need to know if you're caring about draft and development at all. It's not about what they are when you draft them, because great players in college can be not good in the NFL work ethic, system, scheme, something doesn't work out, whatever, they don't end up being good. No, really, almost nobody comes into the NFL ready to go. They're an instant impact game changer, but over time they can become what you expect them to be as a top draft pick. But it's all about development. A player who was maybe not so great in college, had a lot of flaws, can be coached up. If they're a good enough athlete, sky's the limit. We'll see training camp stand out for Kazim Johnson. I mean, I'm ready to be blown away here, but I, I doubt it. Three is just too many. Yeah, three is too many. That's fine. Whatever. 2026 cap room is 84 million. But Nick Chubb has to be re-signed. Greg Newsom, David Njoku, Martin Emerson, Wyatt Teller, Juan Thornhill, Joel Batonio. That's not terrible. Starting center as well. It's not terrible, you know. How about a three-year deal for Nick Chubb? Nick Chubb is back. Big extension, 69 million. Nice. Greg Newsom, very, very affordable for how good he is. I'll give you a six-year deal. Stick around, why don't you? Greg Newsom is back, even though I traded his buddy. The uh, corner I traded in the last trade is a Northwestern guy, Cam Mitchell. Actually, I think was the best friend of Greg Newsom at Northwestern. They were both teammates there. And... Uh, Greg Newsom doesn't seem to care anymore. Wants that money. He's back in Cleveland. David Njoku re-signs as well. Martin Emerson wants to be close to home. How about Ohio? He wants more money. He might be a tough one to bring back. That might be very difficult. Wyatt Teller is fine. I'll even do a three-year deal. I don't want to re-sign him again. Just one contract. 19 million. Juan Thornhill should be traded. Joel Batonio I'd like to bring back as well. 
a two-year deal. He should resign. That's a lot of money for Joel Batonio. Did he say yes? I didn't really see it. But he's not here, which means he did say yes. So down at 2.3 million, Martin Emerson's going to be tough to bring back. Now, that's already built into that price. So it, it's factoring in the contract we already offered him. Dalvin Tomlinson getting cut or traded in the offseason is going to free up some money. But right now, again, we, we can't move him. But it's going to be cheaper next year. That's a player that's going to be traded. But I'm not going to be able to do that before the re-sign period in the offseason. So we're going to have to free up some more space another way um, if we wanted to trade Tomlinson. Otherwise, we could cut him. And then we might have the money to bring back Emerson, Osic, Posick, excuse me. Mid-season mark, we're 2-0. Something's got to give against the Chiefs, probably. Two of the best teams in the AFC. One of them's got to go down. It was probably us, because it's the user team versus simulation. But I'm hoping for at least four wins here at Week 8. I think I'd be pretty happy with that. And then we could consider trading Martin Emerson. He's probably pretty valuable. And if we know we're not going to bring him back, we're 3-3. Three and three. Interesting. Defense is just not so great. All right, this is going to be our trade. This is actually a great one. Martin Emerson is an awesome player to have, but we have two good corners ahead of him. I don't know that your nickel corner needs to be as good in Madden. You guys know how I feel about the slot corner position in real life. It's undervalued. I'm not going to rant about it, but here in the game, don't think it matters quite so much. What does matter is beefing up the interior of our, of our defensive line. We're trading a fourth and a sixth for Jordan Davis and a second round pick from Philly, who is struggling right now in this first half of the year. But this is a big upgrade to our team in general. It is a big upgrade to our defensive line. It is the new highest overall interior defensive lineman on this team. And it really isn't even close. Dalvin Tomlinson was a 77, 78. I guess it's somewhat close. Jordan Davis is an 82. But that is a huge upgrade. Now, I do want a better third corner. But Martin Emerson didn't want to be here. It wasn't going to end up being him. Is basically what that comes down to. Now, Ronnie Hickman is not a great slot corner option. But I'm not really sure what else I can do. Maybe one Thornhill's got to go. We're down to negative cap room after that trade. I, is there a cap penalty associated with that trade, really? Who did I even trade? Emerson? How He's in the final year of his deal. He's being paid nothing. It's because I acquired the Jordan Davis contract and that, that price maybe expands in 2020-whatever. 20, ah, uh, he just got paid. But we're not paying his bonus. I don't know. Getting that second round pick could be factoring in uh, to that as well. Juan Thornhill. Dion Henley's not too bad. That corner was an awful decision. All right, Juan Thornhill and Alex Wright get me Dax Hill from Cincinnati. Fun little interdivision trade for you there. And Dax Hill, I think, is awesome. He's going to play free safety. And he's more of a free safety anyway, in terms of skill set. Now, what is your contract? He's into his fourth year, which means, oh, he signed an extension. So we actually have him for pretty cheap for the next few years. That actually works great for us. That's an easy upgrade at free safety. He's the same overall as Juan Thornhill, but he's younger. Same dev trait. Did have to trade Alex Wright in order to get him, but that's a huge fit. Now, based on his skill set as well, Dax Hill is a slot corner. So we could go ahead and move him down if we wanted to. I'm not going to do that, but we definitely could. But I do need a better third corner than Darius Rush. Somebody a little bit closer to an 80 overall. Doesn't have to be this year. I could draft that. I have a second round pick now. I think those trades made us a lot better, which is obviously the goal. It's what we want to do with every trade that we make. Better draft picks now. First, second, second, fourth. And then we still have basically all of our picks. Just no first in 2028. So I really love where we are right now. And I think we're going to be in a perfect spot to make a playoff run. Dalvin Tomlinson will end up being traded. Do we have any money to sign a better third corner? Marcus Peters is here. That's actually not too bad. I saw Von Bell. Von Bell could be okay. Just don't have the money to sign him. And this is another great trade for us. We are moving on from our starting center right now. Maybe that's not so great. David Bell frees up a little bit more space. And a fifth round pick. It says Tyreek Stevenson from my favorite team to trade with in this video. The Chicago Bears. It's a big upgrade 
for our third corner. I said I could fix it in the draft, but this actually just makes more sense. Uh, Hosick was going to be a free agent, and we have our starting center on the roster, Luke Whippler, who I guess is going to play left guard for the Browns, or is their backup left guard. He's a center. He is a center, so we're going to move him over. I don't know if he's a center with the Browns. Let me rephrase that, but he was a center at Ohio State, projected to be a center in the NFL, and still could be. So we're going to move him over. He's going to start 24-year-old starting center, only a 69 overall. It's nice, but it could be better, but it's only, I guess it's minus nine to Luke, or not Luke Whippler, you're Luke Whippler. It's minus nine to Ethan Posick, but he's six years younger and under contract for the next couple of seasons. So definitely made more sense. Make the playoffs again at 10 and seven. All right, that's not so bad. And Parker Shepard took a big step up. What a year. And when you look at him, he's an 89 overall in his second season, just 23 years old, 4,800 yards, 45 touchdowns to 11 picks, rushing. Nick Chubbs can't get over that five yards per carry number, but still quite a good season. Receiving Elijah Moore dominated. Well, if he didn't have star dev before, he's going to have it now. Makes re-signing him a big time move for us. Amari Cooper was great. Junior Lawrence actually had a great season, and David Njoku as well. The receiver stepped up more, and oh my goodness, this is what I was waiting for. Miles Garrett, 26 and a half sacks. Seven for Kazim Johnson, five and a half for Dalvin Tomlinson. I don't see any there from Jordan Davis. Six picks for Denzel Ward, but this is what I was looking for. A defense to go out and just get it done. Miles Garrett actually performing at an incredibly high level really helps us make that happen, and we squeak into the playoffs. Same record as the Steelers at 10 and 7. Our defense is just still not as good as they should be. Number 20 in points per game. We crush it in the first round of the playoffs. So 42-21 over the Colts. And it's the Ravens in the divisional. And we beat them last year. Doesn't mean we're going to beat them this year, but it does make me feel a little bit better about our chances at least. Pass coverage upgrade for Deacon Godwin. Yeah, he's a decent player, but that's unfortunately all he is right now is just decent. 87 overall Ravens. Can we bring them down? Yes, 24-12, and we are into the conference championship. And we'll have to go through the 16-1 Kansas City Chiefs. Now, on the bright side, we are a better overall than the Chiefs are. Didn't win nearly the amount of games that they did. Maybe don't have quite the star power, but we're moving in that direction. This is a game we could win. Chiefs on the board first. Don't love that, but we answer and then immediately allow a touchdown. It's a close game right now, and we actually take the lead 17 out 24 to 14. Just got to hold on against the Chiefs 31 14. It's good, but the Chiefs make it another touchdown, and I think that's going to be enough. It's 38 28. Still some time left, but our offense was just too much for him in this game. That is a high scoring playoff game. A lot of action, a lot of back and forth, clearly. I was tongue tied at many different spots. Mahomes throws for 384 and three touchdowns, but was arguably outdueled by Parker Shepard, who had another touchdown, won the game, slightly fewer yards, but completed more of his passes, or at least a higher percentage. So, might be a new dawn in the AFC. Parker Shepard's time is now. The Super Bowl is going to be Eagles-Browns. That's a good one, the Jim Schwartz Bowl. I never go with a coordinator, but there you go. Jim Schwartz is a great one. As you Browns and Eagles fans will know, Eagles, I feel like, were tough on Jim Schwartz at the time, but he was pretty good. I just looked up the Jim Schwartz uh, Wikipedia. I have no memory. Oh, I misread it. I, it said, I, I thought it said Bill's head coach 2014. I'm like, I don't remember that at all. He was head coach of the Lions and then became the DC of the Bills. All right, I just misread it. Also, Parker Shepard has been upgraded to Superstar X Factor. As I just noticed, uh, noticed from the icon next to his game or name, or overall, okay, I can't even figure out what I'm saying at all. Oh, better pass blocking from offensive linemen? Sign me up. Eagles are an 88 overall. We stole, not Jalen Carter, we stole Jordan Davis from him. It's a revenge game. Let's see if Jordan Davis can ravage and wreck his former team. It is a Browns and Eagles Super Bowl. Definitely an interesting one. And we'll see what happens. Can we get the win? Nothing would make me happier than beating the Eagles. 10-7 right now. 17-7 going into the half. 
looking good. Another touchdown, 24-7. Defense came to play. Offense is doing enough, except the defense is falling apart a bit. 31-17, 31-24, fourth and five. And we're going to punt? Hold on a second here. We have three timeouts. Let's at least line up. Let's line up like we're going to go for this. From the 44 as well. Oh, this is a tough punt. Now, it's going to have to be. It's going to have to be. The Eagles have no timeouts. Would have to go down the length of the field. The length of the field in a minute or less, depending on this punt. And get into the end zone. Field goal won't do. Now, we're going to play out the drive. Our defense is going to allow a lot of yards very quickly. No question. I'm taking the delay game on purpose, by the way. Back up a little bit. Make this punt a little bit easier. But we just got to keep them out of the end zone. Here we go. Give me a good punt. It's got to get out of bounds. I mean, if they return it, it's actually not so bad. I just can't be a touchback. And I may have made this a touchback. Just gave him free yardage. It had to get out of bounds. Just get it over to the left then. What am I doing? I don't need to pin him on the one. Just put it on the 10. We'll be fine. They get an extra 10 yards due to my negligence. But all right, one drive. Can Jalen Hurts mount the comeback and win the game with his passing ability? Maybe so. Damn. Oh, that's big, though, to keep him in bounds. That takes time off the clock. Uh, I don't know about man coverage here. Let's get out of this. Don't fall for play action, please. Deep throw over the middle. Dax Hill! Interception! Game over! Interception seals it. Super Bowl coming to Cleveland. The first Super Bowl in Cleveland Browns history. They made their first Super Bowl and now they've won their first Super Bowl. Plenty of NFL championships before running water existed. No, not quite that far back, but no Super Bowl success for the Browns. Never really even been close. Ben about the worst franchise in the NFL over the past 50 years, right up there with the Lions. But the Browns get it done. Super Bowl victory. Jalen Hurts, of course, happy for his guys. This Super Bowl celebration so stupid. But the Lombardi Trophy confetti falls down. This might be my first time ever noticing that the confetti is Lombardi Trophy shaped. I've never noticed that. But... There it is. Now I can't not notice it. Parker lifts the Lombardi. The Browns are Super Bowl champions. And we'll see if we can do it again. I'll see you next season. 2025 season recap, of course, as a result we were looking for. Patrick Mahomes wins MVP. No other Browns. Oh, actually, you know what? Miles Garrett is in there. Parker Shepard, Super Bowl MVP. Love it. But I was looking at Rookie of the Year. Nothing in there, unfortunately. But we didn't really have much in the way of draft picks. So it would have been pretty impressive if our just like shot in the dark outside linebacker turned defensive end Kazim last name one defensive rookie there that would have been nuts Shepard up to superstar X factor as I said Chubb of course had it David Njoku superstar X factor did Joel Batonio just retire on me after winning it all can we go back and unwin the Super Bowl Elijah Moore up to star dev all right well now I wish I didn't trade I actually, I, let me, I'm not going to take that back. I'm I'm still fine. I traded Ethan uh, Posick. Denzel Ward up to Superstar? Did he have it? I can't remember. Time to trade Dalvin Tomlinson. We may have our answer on the edge. Kazim Johnson could be the guy. He really could be the guy. And, you know, I don't know if it makes a big impact in simulation or not, but he had great traits. I, I saw swim move, spin move. Bull Rush, maybe. Bull Rush is a possibility. We have 12.2 million to bring back. Ooh. Oh, nobody. We just need a kicker and punter. We can do that in free agency. Joel Batonio retiring on me puts me in a difficult spot. Because that is a big offensive lineman to replace. And I mean, big, of course, a big dude, but it's a higher overall player. Penalty for getting rid of Tomlinson's 12 mil. We save seven. I think it's worth it at that point. So he may be traded this offseason, but I'm gonna let everybody in the re-sign area go. We could sign a good guard for 12 million comfortably. Brock Purdy is a 99 overall. It's just not, it's just not right. I don't like, it's one of the most difficult 
problems because I don't know how you don't rate Brock Purdy highly because his numbers are amazing. And in Madden, like, that's a, that's a big part of it, surely, with how they do their ratings. But Brock Purdy does not, in my opinion, have 99 overall potential. Now, could he be very solid and win a Super Bowl with the 49ers at some point, maybe even this year? I think absolutely. I think we've seen over time that you don't need a superstar quarterback to be successful and make the Super Bowl even. Look at Nick Foles, and you can go on great runs, right? But that's part of it. Nick Foles, Jimmy Garoppolo, Jared Goff with the Rams. These are all guys that have made Super Bowls. Brock Purdy could certainly join that group, but I just don't think he has the potential to be the best quarterback in the league, which is what 99 overall says. Just think that's a little ridiculous, but Greg Rousseau could be big to bring in. Jordan Mailata is here. A number of good tackles. Older, though. Could shift somebody around. I don't want Isaac Sayamalo. Don't really want Andre James. Alex Kappa is an option. Alex Kappa is not an awful option. Lel Collins. Jordan Mailata. I mean, he could be a fun guard, to be honest, but I, I'm not paying that. David Bakhtiari for a year. I don't really want to move any of these guys to guard, though. I'm going to I'm gonna go after Alex Kappa. Nobody wants him. He's cheap, and he's solid. I'm all the way sold on all of those things. Rousseau kind of wants to be here, but it's just... I don't think it's something that's going to work. I can try to see. I know we have Kazim Johnson. We could have both. Por que no los dos? Right? Why not both? But... First round pick number 32, 63, 64. Not super valuable picks. But um, they're the picks we have to work with. I could move one for a big interior defensive lineman. Dalvin Tomlinson has to be traded. He will have no suitors, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I'm wrong. Now, they're not offering. These are horrific offers for him. I can't do that, but we could definitely get him off our books. Throwing in DTR increases what we can get. The Panthers are offering Jadeveon Clowney. I've got a better idea. I will negotiate with the Panthers, but I'm more interested in a guy like Brian Burns. Now, I can't get Brian Burns straight up for this. This would be absolutely ridiculous. But I can potentially offer picks to bring in a monster pass rusher. But it would have to be multiple first-round picks, and I'm, I'm not even sure that would be accepted. Now, Brian Burns is kind of not in play. Derek Brown, probably not either. But I, I certainly would be interested in him as well. But it doesn't really seem like it's going to happen. All right, interesting trade here. It's DTR, unfortunately, I have to say goodbye to. Dalvin Tomlinson, a third next year, fourth this year, and a couple of early day three picks for a second rounder from Seattle. It's really just a salary cap dump. I don't think I'm going to use it on Gregory Rousseau. We can't really even offer him. So that's fine. We get rid of Tomlinson, which is what I wanted to do. And we need to replace him somehow. It might just be done by trading in the draft for a player that we can now afford. Or maybe even drafting one if the right one becomes available. Yeah, this is the one. Justice Favors. Elite speed. Ran in the four sevens. Looks really well-rounded, if not elite, in any one area. And he should be available at 32. Don't have to move, just our guy's going to fall right to us. And here we are at 32. Thought we'd trade for a defensive tackle. But I think Justice Favors is just worth taking at this point in the draft. B block shed finesse moves, power moves, A tackle physically is incredible. I mean, he ran in the low 4.7s at 298 pounds. Very, very good. And he's very strong as well. 88 strength, 79 speed, 84 acceleration, star or better development. Probable starter right away. And some pass rush upside next to Jordan Davis, who is just a mountain of a man. We have round two, pick nine, round two, pick 31. I see the clock's ticking. This could be a point where we pause it and look to make a trade definitely a possibility. You know, I'm thinking about what we need. Not really a lot. We're pretty good. We're just looking for upgrades maybe at a couple of different positions. Kind of it. Although Melvin Slayton is somebody I looked at earlier 
that I did like. Elite speed, A catching, whatever, A tackle, B block shed, B awareness. Could be a really good linebacker. Now, does he get to our next pick? Maybe. I don't know that he's good enough that we have to draft him here. Especially with Aiden Chambers available that looks pretty good. Especially with Skylar Matthews that might look even better. No, we're, we're not going to draft him here. We're going to trade this pick for something. Or, I mean, well, yeah, for something. Either a player or more future draft picks. I'm not sure. We signed Alex Kappa, by the way. Signed Alex Kappa. Offense looks good. Luke Whipler could be better, but that's fine. Could have a better backup running back, but we don't need one. And then defensively, yeah, linebacker. Defensive tackle we just addressed. Edge probably not going to address here. It may be an upgrade. I mean, but the linebackers in this draft look good. But maybe just to make sure we can get one. Yeah, I don't know what we do with this pick. I'll see what the offers are. We trade our second round pick for a 25-year-old star dev middle linebacker, Kendall Sampson from the Niners. And we actually can't afford to do that? Why? I always forget the Niners are so negative that no trades can be made. I hate that. You know what? A second round pick this year and next year, the current second round pick, gets us Peter Skaronsky from the Titans. I think that's the move to be made. 25 years old, going to continue to develop on the offensive line. Alex Kappa can now go into more of a backup role. We only signed him for a year anyway. And uh, Skaronsky, instant starting. Or, or, hold on, stay with me here. Maybe Peter Skaronsky even slides to center over Luke Whipler right away. That's a pretty good option. Back-to-back -back picks here in the second round. Probably will be spent on linebacker, even though Kai Carey is around one to two talent. It's not around one to two talent that we necessarily need. Because Melvin Slayton from Notre Dame looks worth drafting, right? Yeah, I mean... Travis Crompton as a UDFA actually looks pretty good too. Same with Eric Solomon. Middle linebacker, Aiden Chambers looks awesome. That might be the pick. And then Skylar Matthews looks amazing. That might be the pick. Bill Collins, great name. Kevin Bully. These linebackers all look amazing. So either they all suck equally, and I'm just being tricked, or we actually might have something. Let's go Melvin Slayton first. Hidden Dev, 86 speed, 89 acceleration. Good start. Linebacker out of Notre Dame that could potentially start right away. Our next pick is going to be a linebacker as well, as I mentioned. Is it just going to be the middle linebacker or the outside linebacker? That's the question. Aiden Chambers or Skylar Matthews? Fighting for the whitest name of all time. I think I'd probably take Skylar, but man, Aiden's pretty white. A zone, A awareness. I like that. Great speed. Field general archetype. And then Skylar Matthews. A block shed is great. A to B pursuit, A tackle. I just think he's a little bit better. Skylar Matthews, hidden dev, 85 speed, 87 acceleration. I think that's the move. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we got the dev trait. Aiden could be pretty good too, but Skylar Matthews, I think, ended up uh, being the best one we could have drafted that spot. Give me at least a 75 overall. That'd be sick. Ooh. Just, okay, hold on. Justice Favors is 73. Kind of forgot we even drafted him at this point. That's good enough to be a starter. 73 power moves. Yeah, he's really good. I think that's a solid selection. My voice starting to go on me a bit here at this point. Melvin Slayton is a 75 overall. Should be a starter. Great block shed. Every trait you could want, even though he's not even a pass rusher. Here's the thing that makes that a little bit more difficult is Skylar Matthews. Skylar Matthews is also quite good. Just, I don't know. I think we just go to the higher overall guy. They're very close, but I think we lean into Melvin Slayton. Yeah. Also, we drafted a random star dev quarterback out of Florida. 85 speed. David DePofi. All right. You know, I... I forgot to draft a kicker and a punter or sign one, but I will uh, probably do that now. Oh, we just got a dev trade increase for the linebacker. All right, that was huge. Okay, that caught me off guard. <laughs>
I don't even know if I was looking at the screen. I glanced as we were skipping through. So he had Star Dev, the rookie outside linebacker. Now he has Superstar. Now we're definitely starting him, even though I was going to anyway. Now we definitely are. Team looks really good. I want to see success. Back-to-back -back Super Bowls would be ideal. Might not be the most possible, but I'd appreciate it. Okay, well, this is bizarre. The Ravens beat us week one. After that, we went 6-0. The Raiders are 6-0. The Steelers are 0-7. This is a wild season so far. Now, we made the playoffs 14-3. However, we have to play in the wild card game. After going 14-3, Parker Shepard leads the league in passing yards, second in touchdowns with 44, only seven picks rushing Nick Chubb. Still getting it done. Yards per carry has never exceeded five, and look at these receivers. David Njoku, over 1,300 yards, 13 touchdowns. Samari Cooper was amazing. Elijah Moore was amazing. Junior Lawrence is kind of like fourth option on this team. He had more speed, maybe it'd be something special. It really just looks like a chain mover, red zone threat type of guy, but didn't really score that many touchdowns. Offense just didn't really seem to let him. I kind of thought he could make for a good tight end when I drafted him, but obviously we have Njoku, so it never really even came up. Good season, 12 TFLs for Kazim Johnson, 12 sacks for Miles Garrett. Decent interception numbers, but it's all about playoff success. We're in a good spot, but got to win these games. The dev trait for Matthews is unknown, but Favors, Justice Favors, has superstar development. Wasn't really expecting that, to be honest, but he is a freak athlete with decent rush moves. This has a devastating, the devastating makeup of a first round exit. Can we get through the Dolphins in the wild card? I just feel like we're going to lose. 31-23, we are out. You can just sense it sometimes. You can just sense when it's going to happen. That is the season, and that's going to be the rebuild. This was a really fun one. Got the Browns to Super Bowl, drafted at what is now probably the best quarterback in the league, or right there at least. Incredible player. He is a monster. Parker Shepard. I mean, Amari Cooper up to Superstar X Factor. It's a great, great team. Defensively. Godwin up to star. Matthew's dev trait is still not revealed. All right, I can't end the video without knowing his dev trait. No MVP? How does Parker Shepard lose to Josh Allen? What are we doing? Matthew's ends up having star dev, but that's going to do it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.